Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day six of the Leco Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's vlog. Uh, today I am tired again. I don't know. I'm just, every day I'm tired. I guess maybe that's just the background. I've been training pretty hard, but uh, I am finally going to take a rest a uh, couple of days as I go to a wedding this weekend. So this week. Yeah, I'm thinking of signing up for a marathon uh, in Lisbon. Uh, I haven't really decided yet, so I might just like do training for a little couple of days, and then and uh, yeah, and then figure out whether you know uh, uh, figure out how um, yeah how, whether I am able to. Uh, if not, I could always do it next year. So it's not a big deal. So it's not. I, I maybe I should rest a little bit before doing these videos. My apologies, but let's take a take a look at today's poem. Today we have eight forty six. Hand of straits. Alice has some cards that he she oh sorry, number of cards that she, and she wants to rearrange the cards in a group so that each group is of group size consists of group size consecutive cards. Given an integer away hand and where hands of eye is the value written on the eye card and an integer group size. Oh, so you have to be basically every card has to be used. Okay, and apparently it's the same as the other poem. Did we do the other poem? I'm just curious. Okay, so so no double whammy, but uh, if I did this one too, right? In 20... In July, so even closer to five years ago. But I mean, it, um, I think the key thing to note is that... The key thing to note is that um, you have to use all of them, right? So when you have to use all the cards, um, the the decision will, is that, or like the thought process that I would have is, is there a way to force it such that there are no decisions that can be possible? Uh, meaning that you, at every, um, every step of something, you're forced to do something because there's no other way. Uh, and what, what I mean by that, and that sounds kind of vague, but I want to set up the framework as to how I approach these problems, maybe for this one, it's a little bit on the easier side. Maybe not. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. But, but, and that, you know, they're more into, uh, you know, they're more intuition and intuitive way to think about it. Uh, but, but I always set the framework of thinking about a way such that you can restructure it so that um, you're forced to do something at every turn. And, and there are no decisions to be made. The reason why I talk about decision is that once you have decisions, then you have to figure out how to make the best decision, right? But if there's no decision, then you don't have to optimize for anything. You just, you're forced to do it. So then there's no choice, right? Um, that's basically the idea. And here, the idea here I would, I would think about is to always pick the, the, um, the card with the least value, right? And what do I mean by that? If we always take the card of the least value as the beginning of a of a set, for example, we start with one, we, then that means that the next number has to be two, and that means that also three has to be in it, right? And then so so in a way, in a way in this case, for, for example, there's a one, the, the smallest number card or the lowest number card uniquely determines a set set of straights or a group of straight, right? And then now, in a way, you have to choose, well, okay, so now we want to um, choose, which is a choice or a decision, if you will, which, which is what, what card to choose as the lowest. You can, I mean, it's a very kind of straightforward thing. I mean, maybe you could call it intuition, but you can also easily prove it very quickly. If you have one, two, three, four, for example, and the group size is three, uh, my keyboard just being weird. If you could choose between one and two, you have to choose one. There's no choice. And the reason is because if you skip one, then there's no other group size, like, and then you remove the other thing, you will always need to go back and choose one, right? 
I mean, unless there's a zero, or but you know, like if one is the smallest number, then you always have to go back and choose it anyway. So why not choose it earlier? So that's kind of the uh, um, idea behind it. Even if the um, even if the proof is not super tight, that's basically the idea. So the first thing I'm going to do is collection, put in a calendar hand, right? And then now for do, 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 what was a key in f dot keys, but of course we want to sort this, right? So then now, uh, yeah. And then now maybe we can do something like well, f of k is equal or greater than zero. We can do something like check if k k plus one dot 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 k plus group size minus one maybe yeah uh, is routed right. So we can say good is equal to true right for um, offset in range of group size uh, if f of k plus offset is you uh, go to zero then good is you go to false if good then this is good so if not if not good then we're already missing uh, you know that means that there's no other way to construct uh, a head where k is the least so then we can return force so I'm having some hiccups Otherwise, we want to do this loop again, except that we know that this is going to be greater than zero. So then we can do f of k plus offset decrement by one. And eventually this will be zero, so this will terminate, and then we go to the next thing. And yeah. And if it passes everything, then we can return true. And obviously you can do a little bit of shortcut as well. For example, if n mod group size is not equal to zero, um, just for some performance. Well, I'm going to submit it just to uh, kind of check it out. And then maybe we can, um, yeah, 15, 28 days streak. <clears throat> I'm just curious if that, but I mean, that's like a very specific thing anyway. So I don't know. I don't know if you saved that much time. Yeah, apparently not. So I don't know. It depends on the input, which is, I don't know. Um... But yeah, so what's the complexity here, right? Uh, this is linear time, linear space. That's just how hash tables work. Um, this is n log n, and you can actually do some kind of counting sort if you really uh, want to. But it's a little bit awkward because, you know, it's up to 10 to the 9. But yeah, so this is going to make it n log n. Uh, but everything else is just linear, right? Because we only look at everything once-ish. Um, because the... the the first time we see something is zero here, we already return false. And if we see something zero here, then we don't go through the loop. So that means that everything is basically an aggregate linear time. Uh, well, I mean, everything inside the loop, because this is obviously n log n, as we mentioned. So in total, this is n log n time, O of n space, and there you have it. Uh, yeah, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you have. Uh, uh, English anymore. That's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Stay healthy to good mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.